In this video, I'm going to show you four example problems for how to factor a trinomial where your front term has a number that you cannot factor out. So notice how 14 is not divisible by 3 and 8 is not divisible by 3. I want to show you how to factor without having to guess and check. Although guess and check is a perfectly great method, um, you know, it just... It takes a little bit more time. So I'll show you one guess and check, and then I want to show you just kind of a helpful tool. So anyway, uh, in order to have two binomials factor to make 3x squared, the only factors that make 3x squared would be a 3x times an x. There's no other numbers that multiply to make 3 and an x squared. Now, factors that multiply to make 8 are going to go here in this spot. But numbers that multiply to make 8 would be 8 and 1 or 2 and 4. And so the question is this. The question is this. I'm going to show you. Is this how it goes? Is it 1 and 8? Is it 8 and 1? Is it 2 and 4 or is it 4 and 2? Now, without having to check all of those, I want to show you how to factor this polynomial without having to guess and check. And I use what is called a split the middle method. And this is what you need to know. You need to have in mind this thing that I call big X. And what you put in the top of the big X is your A times C of your polynomial. So AX squared plus BX plus C. And at the bottom of your big X, you put the B term. So a, which is 3, times c, which is 8, 3 times 8 is 24, is going to go at the top of my big X. The middle number is what goes at the bottom. And then you're going to find two numbers here that multiply to make the top number and add to make the bottom number. So what multiplies to make 12 and at the same time adds to make 14? 12 and a 2. Now those two numbers, we are going to split our middle term, the 14, up by. So my front term doesn't change, and my last term doesn't change. But instead of writing 14, I'm going to write a 12x and a 2x. And now what I'm going to do is factor by what is called grouping, because we have four terms here. Now again, the only way to know what two terms you're supposed to split this 14 with, like is it 14 and 0, is it... 13 and 1, is it, you know what I mean? Like, how do you know those two numbers? You have to get it from the big X, which is two numbers that multiply to make A times C, and those same two numbers add to make your middle term B. And so if you don't have this set up, you're never going to find those two middle terms. So anyway, uh, also, the order of what you put these two in, so let's say you had done it in reverse, 2X and 12X, it won't matter, you'll get the same answer. Uh, now, with... Grouping, you take the first two terms and you find what is called the GCF of just your first two terms. Both of these are divisible by 3, and I can take out an X from both of those, and I'm left with X plus 4. Now, my last two terms are both even and both divisible by 2, so I'm going to divide both of those by 2. And now what happens is, when these match, that is one of your factor pairs. And the GCFs that you had pulled out, the 3X in the front and the 2 in the back, that makes your other factor pair. Now I want to check with you. I'm going to check my answer and prove to you that we do get what we started with. X times 3X is 3X squared. X times 2 is 2X. Now 4 times 3X is 12X and 4 times 2 is 8. Does this combine to make what we started with? Yes, it does, so we checked. So this is the two factors that multiply to make my original polynomial, 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. All right, now, I'm not going to do the guess and check anymore. I'm going to do three more examples of how to use the big X and do grouping. So again, I'm going to write my big X first. It's a is 7 b is 1x and c is negative 8. At the top, we're going to put a times c. So 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. The b goes at the bottom, which is 1. Now find two numbers that multiply to make negative 56 and at the same time add to make 1. So you might have to think for a little while. Let's see here. 
Well, what's 56 divided by 8? 7? Oh! What if we used a positive 8 and a negative 7? Let's try it. Okay. So my, my middle is what gets split. That's why I've called split the middle method. So 7x squared. Now instead of 1x, I'm going to write an 8x, a negative 7x, and a minus 8. Now in these two terms, again, it doesn't matter what order you put this in. You'll get the same factor pairs, I promise. In these two terms, what's in common? Well, the only thing they have in common is they both share an 8. So I'm going to take out, I'm sorry, an x. They both share an x. So I'm going to take out an x, not an 8. These two terms are negative, so I'm going to divide each of them by negative 1. Now, do these factor pairs match? If they do, that means that that's one of your factor answers. And what's left is your GCFs that you pulled out. Pulled out an x, and we pulled out a negative 1. And this is your factors. OK, here's two more. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do split the middle. So split the middle. Here we go. 5 times 8, or a times c goes at the bottom, which is 40. Negative 22, the signs matter. So positive times a positive makes positive 40. Negative 22 goes at the bottom. What two numbers multiply to make 40 and add to make negative 22? OK, I'm going to use my calculator here. 40 divided by 4, 4 and 10, no, 40 divided by 2, oh, 2 and 20, 2 and 20, okay. How about if it's a negative 2 and a negative 20, those will add to make negative 22 and they will multiply to make positive 40. So my middle is what gets split into a negative 20 and a negative 2. But the front stays the same and the back stays the same. So I should, let me, let me fix my arrow because my arrow didn't quite work. It's actually those two terms. Okay, now split the middle method means now we're gonna do grouping. So we split the middle, the negative 22 into two terms, and now we can do grouping. Both of these are divisible by five and an x. I'm left with x minus four. Both of these two terms is divisible by two. And I'm left with negative x and a positive 4. Now I notice that these are very similar but the signs aren't right which means this sign needs to change. Okay so again watch. If I took out a negative 2 this will be a positive x and 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Do these match now? Yes. So that's one of your answers. x minus 4 and the GCFs come together to make your other factor. All right, here's our last one. I notice right away that all of my terms are even. You always have to factor out your GCF first, always. So I'm gonna factor out a two first. So 12x squared plus x and minus six. Now, there's not a GCF left over here, and so what I'm going to do is split the middle method. All right, so here we go. My a times c, or 12 times negative 6, is negative 72. And my b goes at the bottom, which is 1. What two numbers multiply to make negative 72 and add to make 1? Well, 9, 9 and an 8. What if it's 9 and negative 8? That will... Multiply to make negative. Yeah, that will add to make 1. Okay, so now here's my split the middle method. The 12x squared, uh, but now this middle term, the x, is going to be split up with a 9x and a minus 8x. And then I have minus 6. Don't forget about that GCF we took out front. Okay, now grouping. Both of these are divisible by a 3 and an x. So if I divide by 3, I get 4x. Divide by 3, I get 3. Both of these are negative, so I'm going to divide both of those by, what, well, they're both even? Let's try that. Divide by the negative, you get 4x. Yep, that matches. Divide by the negative, you get positive 3. Perfect. So my 2 that I took out first is going to stay. One of my factors is the 4x plus 3 that matched. The GCFs here, the 3x, 
and the minus two there come together to make your other factor pair. Nice job.